Well, hello, everyone. This is Byron King with Investor Intel. And, this, and today we are going to speak with a gentleman named Karim Uzunmets, who is running a company called Metallum, a fairly new name to many people out there, but a name that perhaps and we hope will uh, become more familiar. Uh, Metallum is in the zinc uh, side of the house with a project in uh, in, in Canada, uh, just north of uh, Lake Superior in that whole stretch of uh, Precambrian rocks up there that's been the host of so many other places over so many, so many, you know, dozens of decades, really. So Karem, hello, it's great to be with you. Um, uh, just for people who are not familiar with Metallum, haven't heard of it, give us the, give us a, the one or two minute elevator summary. What is Metallum and what are you guys doing? Yeah, no, thanks for uh, having me. This is a great, uh, you know, uh, there's always, you know, it's always good to talk to you. And uh, no, yeah, Metallum is relatively new. We just started trading last year uh, when we acquired this asset uh, from an Australian company who couldn't really, with COVID, uh, it was getting difficult for them. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's a zinc and copper mainly project. It's very, very high grade, one of the highest grade deposits in the world, definitely highest grade in Canada that's under development. It's an old mine with exceptional numbers, and uh, we're looking at uh, reopening the mine right now uh, as we move forward, you know, with this uh, process. It's, uh, like I said, super high grade, so uh, it's going to be very profitable. Now that the zinc price is high, as well as copper, and it's going to remain high, uh, all the indicators are there. It's at actually all-time highs, um, both for both, uh, both metals, and they are both critical metals for US and Canada, and with all the incentives that government Ontario, as well as federal government doing, this is the best time. Okay, well, that opens a whole book of questions here. Uh, you are in, um, you're working north of Lake Superior, if I, if, if my mapping is correct. And uh, people may have heard of Thunder Bay, for example. Uh, you know, here's Lake Superior, and down below is, is Michigan, and over there is Minnesota. So, so if, if I'm at Thunder Bay, where are you from Thunder Bay? Yeah, that's a that's a good point. Uh, we're just east of Thunder Bay, about 150 kilometers mm -hmm. with the highway connected. Mm -hmm. um, so you drive from Thunder Bay, 150 kilometers along Trans-Canada Highway, and there's a 20 kilometer well-maintained road off the highway right to the mine gate. So it's a very well location, very well located. Uh, there's a town called Schreiber, closest town, railway station, so uh, fantastic infrastructure. The, the main thing is between Thunder Bay and Wawa, it's highly underexplored. There is that potential, which this property is also underexplored, but it's also, we have the history of mining in the whole region. So we get best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. What I really like about that entire region is, is you know, it, it's ancient Precambrian rock and, you know, you know, what was it, two billion years ago, there was a failed rift system in the middle of North, North America where the continents start to pull apart, but then they didn't pull apart or else we'd know about it. They didn't, or they came, came back in. But, there, but that whole region, uh, when you get into like Upper Michigan and the Keweenaw Peninsula I have here on my desk, there's a beautiful specimen of, of just elemental native copper from Keweenaw. Uh, and, and some of the, you know, it was the, er it was the first American mining boom in the in the 1830s really that that uh you know where, where it was just native copper people were just pulling it right out of the rocks and you, you know so there's Keweenaw. on you go under the lake which is a, a glacial feature and also has to do with with that ancient failed rift system because the glaciers you know moved out all the softer sediments but then you come back up into those hard rocks over on the other side and there you are in the same kind of geology you know, copper zinc and uh, Metallum. Now you said this is a previously mined area, so there's a road and there's a, a nearby town. You've got labor force, and you also, I believe, have a power line uh, passing uh, right next to you or through you, if I'm not mistaken. Is that so? That's so right. You know, your infrastructure is right there. Is that is that fair to say? That's that's uh, that's correct. There's a lot of infrastructure that's already in place um, because we, you know, um, luckily inherited all this. The good thing is the power line goes actually across the property. They uh, recently upgraded or upgrading still parts of it th through the whole region. Uh, we have a transformer on site, but we also have all the underground development, 16 kilometers of underground development, right to the ore remaining ore um, and tailings dam and water treatment facility and so forth. So it's gonna make <laughs> a lot easier for permitting, but also on the capital uh, investment side of things. 
Well, it's always a pleasure to encounter a company that has a really great high grade deposit and it's not way far in the middle of nowhere and they have to build a road and build a power line and all that because you just you just made a lot of your capex go away uh, because it's right there. So um, it's previously mined. Uh, what were the old timers? What did they dig and what did they leave behind? And, and how do you what, what's your plan to really come, come up with a resource that will, uh, you know, kind of kind of bulk up the company and make everybody some money? Absolutely. Just in a just a highlight, uh, a high level overview. It's a VMS deposit. VMS deposits usually come multiple pods or or horizons or deposits. And VMS per se. for the for the people out there who are not geologists, volcano ma- volcanic massive sulfide, which is basically if you go out to the middle of Pacific Ocean, you know, 500 miles offshore California and 17,000 feet down, you will see these things called black smokers that are just sort of pouring copper, zinc, lead, cadmium, all this other stuff, right out of the crust of the earth into the seawater. And then they, it sort of settles out into these big, massive deposits. And that's why, you know, it's, even though it's 17,000 feet offshore, underwater offshore, 500 miles, people are talking about, oh, we're going to mine the seabed. Well, we don't have to mine the seabed if we can mine uh, the, the, you know, the upper peninsula of Michigan and, and uh, Thunder Bay. So, okay, back, back to, back to your yeah. VMS. Yeah, I didn't, just, I didn't want to go into it. But... With metals, it's great. It's a great, yeah. fabulous ore deposit. So, so tell us about what, what, what is it? What did they mine? And yeah, so they, they discussed. So this was mined in the 90s, about 10 years. Uh, in the 11th year, they closed it. Uh, what they mined was 3.3 million tons at 16% zinc, 1% copper with precious metals. Very clean concentrate, 16%. no lead, 16% in average, okay? The, the top, top portion is lower percentage, 10%. We say low percent, but just to give a context for, for everybody, the average zinc grade historically was 5%. Nowadays, it's around 2 to 3%. That is under production. So it's exceptional when we even say 10% is uh, low grade. Same thing for copper. Now, 0.5% is considered as high grade. We have 1%. It's, it's incredible. It's small. We know it's small. We just don't know how big it is. That's one of the things we, uh, we know. But anyway, just stay on track. Um, it, they mined about 3 million tons, 16% for over 10 years. That, e- equ- that is equal to almost $2 billion with today's numbers. That's what they mined in 10 years. What's remaining is the second horizon that they discover. So only two. Usually it comes, this, this type of deposits comes at four to six horizons, and there's absolutely no drilling done around it. They only drilled into these horizons. Even the remaining ore, which is 2 million tons, 18% in average, it goes up to 40s, 40% in the lower part section, which we're planning to mine initially with these high prices. It's going to be very good. And, and one to 2% uh, copper and precious metals. Clean concentrate history, as well as the recent met work. So very good sitting duck there. We know this duck is sitting there. We just don't know how big the duck is. Um, the thing is they drilled only 247 boreholes to define this second, um, which is enough for 43101 and so forth. But just to give a context, the one that they mined, they drilled more than 1,500 diamond drilled boreholes. So that second pod alone is not well understood. But there's also other areas that with the geophysical and other exploration work that defined as targets. And we did some holes. We just drilled six boreholes into those. And like you mentioned, we saw a lot of smoke. So there are all the indicators that there is more to be found. But our initial focus is to develop this because this is the time to start producing. Well, well, in a in a broad sense, I mean, the world doesn't have enough copper mines and zinc mines. The ones that we do have are getting old and they're running down. And like you mentioned, you know, copper mines are they're mining fractions of a percent grade, and you've got one percent copper and zinc mines are down in the two percent, and you're at sixteen. So do do the math. That's that's eight x there. So uh, now. Um, are you able, you've, you've drilled some of your own, are you able to re, revisit the historical uh, workings, the old, you know, the old assays and uh, old tailings piles? Do, are those revealing new numbers to you in the sense that you maybe reassay the old, old, old uh, tailings, reassay old core, reassay old samples and, and learn things from that? Yes, um, we personally didn't do it, but previously before us, it was done on the core 
all the assays were done. We are looking at doing some extra MET work just to see if we can even improve the recoveries. The recoveries at the recent MET work actually confirmed the historic numbers. So um, it's looking good that way. We will probably do some drilling to extend the mine life as we start construction. But right now, our immediate focus is get to production as soon as possible. So we have a feasibility study uh, that is basically putting out the, the, the route to production. We are looking at some of the strategy to cut that by half, actually, at okay. this point. Okay, so um, now we get to sort of the nuts and bolts of it. If you want to move to production, what does the bank account look like and uh, what in terms of financing? And tell us about the share structure of Metallum uh, and how people would buy shares if they wanted to buy shares, if, if they're interested. Absolutely. We're now uh, trading on uh, TSX. We are in the process of getting listed on OTC in the United States. So because mm -hmm. we have really good support from um, or interest from the United States as well. So that's uh, that's on the last stretch, should be done it within this month. We are, so when we acquired this asset, we acquired it from an Australian entity who used to own and did all the initial work for the feasibility study. Uh, they're now called Frontier Energy. They own 45% uh, of our company at this point because it was done by issuing equity to them. Um, we have... The us, like myself, our chairman Simon Ridgeway, and uh, some and directors, and all all the insiders, we we are about three percent, just over three percent, and Sprott has just under ten percent. The rest is retail. However, retail are predominantly. We just raised uh, five million dollars. It was oversubscribed. Uh, we raised five and a quarter million. With those, mostly they were the previous shareholders, so they're still in it for the long run. So our retail investment that's free float in per se is about 20, 25% at most. The rest are really tightly held shares. Um, so yeah, our ticker is MZN. Uh, and um, so with this money, this is going to get us into construction decision. Uh, we can do all the work for permitting. We have a bunch of permits in place, air ECA and all like water treatment and stuff like that. We're looking at dewatering the underground workings. At this at this point, they are flooded as per of the closure plans when they close the mine. Um, but we're we're looking at starting dewatering at the end of this summer. Um, the, the process is underway for the permitting for that. Uh, it involves a lot of things. So um, we're going to do that with that money. We're going to do all the uh, permitting to production uh, that covers all that. Obviously, we will need more to put the mill together as well as you know uh going into production but that's um that's a different story because we we have metal traders that are actually interested i'm talking to four different houses right now um we are we are starting to take it to the next level and some debt providers as well as mine builders um, that are interested to coming in with the equity so we have some interest um but yeah it's very exciting times the next steps will be major Okay, well, what I'm hearing is that, you know, obviously the geology is fabulous. I mean, I, I know that personally, I've been in that region, not to your exact site, but I've spent many, many site visits there. And, and the, the geology is fabulous. You've got a previously producing mine that has a history of excellent output. You know, you've got the second horizon. So, you know, the, you know, you know the, the other version of what they mined out first. So there's plenty left. You got a resource and you're not, you're, I mean, in the sense that you're always exploring, but I mean, you're really moving towards production. So you're a near-term um, uh, play towards uh, production and cash flow, which, you know, is, is, is what people, you know, want to see. They want to see some cash. They want to ring the cash register. Uh, what is your time frame from now, which is, you know, we're in the middle of May, 2022. What would be your time frame to see, you know, ore or material coming out of the mine? Absolutely. So um, based on what we know with the current, permitting process mm -hmm. and what we have in terms of permits and the and the financing that's coming we are looking at um so start dewatering and start building the access decline putting the mill together we are probably going to be ready by the well with the permit permit process as well by the end of next year so conservatively year being 2023 2023 okay. so we could conservatively say q1 of 2024 we should be producing. That's uh, that's with the leeway. Okay, so when I do some math in my head, that's like eighteen to 20, 20 to 21 months or so yeah. from now. 
Yeah, mm. hopefully shorter. Uh, we're shooting for shorter, to be mm. honest, but I mm. want it to be, you know, safe to say that. Okay, well, well, the metal markets are hot. Copper's in demand. Zinc is in demand. You know, the whole world build out, whether it's fixing the roads and the bridges or whether it's building windmills or whether it's building, you know, electric cars that don't rust because they have zinc coated steel. Uh, you know, you, there's, there's a market for your product. Uh, we're, we're, we're running into the time, you know, challenge here. So we're going to have to wrap it up. Um, you know, great geology, past production, infrastructure's there. Uh, you've got uh, some metallurgy work that you're going to do. You are in a uh, uh, project development stage at this point. Uh, That's right. And it's, uh, it's uh, metallum, metallum Resources, which is a fairly new name. Uh, your, your, your last comment, and then we'll, we'll sign off. Okay, yeah. The last comment is zinc market, yes, for infrastructure, galvanizing for all the electrification, the zinc air batteries are getting traction because it's cheap. You know, um, they don't rust, they don't uh, combust or any, they don't need permit to even transport and cheaply store energy. But what's interesting is in the next three to five years, major mines are going into closure uh, for zinc. So zinc, while zinc demand is growing, the closure is going to create about 500,000 tons to 1 million deficit by 2026 over 1 million deficits by 2027. That's considering all the probable mines around the world coming into production. So really, really good time. It should be a good run at least five to seven years. And with that, we will uh, sign off. And to all the viewers out there, uh, I will just one more point. Metallum has a website and they have presentation and they have, uh, a, there's a lot of very good information there as well. And uh, obviously if you have questions, there's a point of contact where you'll, get yourself to the company to their IR side or to Karim himself uh, to answer your questions and uh, I think it's telling that 75 percent of the shares are owned by people who understand a few things about copper and zinc so uh, with that thank you Karim uh, thank you uh, watchers and viewers and listeners out there we wish you well thank you for having me